Chapter 7, Linear Regression. Um, we're, I'm going to be talking about how to interpret the slope, the y-intercept, the correlation coefficient, also known as r, and the coefficient of determination, also known as r squared. What we have here is a mini tab output, and the way we read this is first of all in this case we are given that the situation here is volume versus height so we have the volume versus height and we are given actually the least square regression line uh, volume is equal to negative 87.1 plus 1.54 times height so this is actually multiplying the height now the height is our explanatory variable and the volume here is our response variable. Now sometimes in a mini tab output such as this, you will not be given an equation. You will need to identify your y-intercept and slope and then write the equation. So um, the first thing is your y-intercept is always in the row where it says constant. So that means an under coefficient. So the y-intercept here is negative 87.12. So recall that the equation is given as y hat, which in this case is the volume, is equal to the y-intercept plus the slope times our explanatory variable. So in this case, negative 87.12 is our y-intercept, also known as our a. And our slope is always underneath the constant. So we can see that the explanatory variable in this case is height. And right underneath the coefficient, underneath your a value will be your slope. So our b value is 1.5433. So normally you would need to identify those and then plug it into the equation. Uh, but in this case, they wrote it for you right here. All right, so the important things to pull up from the mini tab are the y-intercept, the slope, and also here we are given r squared. You basically can re ignore the r squared adjusted and for this semester the only thing that's important is this column right here to write your least square regression line as i mentioned before under the coefficient is your y-intercept that is your a value and underneath that is your slope that is your b value so let's go ahead and see how we would interpret that all right, so looking at the regression equation, we have the volume predicted is equal to negative 87.1 plus 1.54, and again, as I mentioned, times the height. Now, how do we interpret slope? Slope is in, uh, interpreted in the following way. We want to start off by either saying it is predicted or on average because we are using an average line so our l our least square regression line is known as our predicted line so when we interpret the slope we want to say it is predicted for each increase in height so right here for each increase in height of one unit the volume is expected to increase by approximately the slope amount what is the slope amount it is given to us as 1.54 so again as the height increases by one unit it is predicted that volume will increase now i say increase because the slope is positive since the, the slope is positive we say increase if the slope here was negative we would say decrease so it will increase by approximately 1.5433 units now the units were not provided so normally you want to if it was given in centimeters or Whatever the units are, you should mention it, but in this case, they didn't mention the units. 
How do we interpret y-intercept? We know from algebra that the y-intercept is when x is 0. So you don't want to just say the y-intercept is when x is 0. You want to, in context, what does it mean x? x in this case is our explanatory variable, which happens to be our height. So we can say when the it is predicted, again, we want to start off by saying it is predicted when the height will be 0, the volume will be, what will we be left with? If this is 0, then all this will basically cancel. We'll be left just with the y-intercept here, negative 87.1. So it is predicted when the height will be 0, the volume will be negative 87.1 units. Now, most of the time, uh, the y-intercept will not make any sense. Sometimes it could make sense. But in this case, it makes absolutely no sense that when a height is 0, that the volume will be negative 87.1. It's not possible to have a negative volume, uh, nor is it possible to have a zero height. All right, the next thing we want to interpret is um, R. So R we know is uh, our correlation coefficient. It tells us the strength and the direction of the relationship. So we are not given R here, but what we are given is R squared. And we know from algebra, in order to get R, we can take the square root of R squared. So right here, to find R, we can take the square root of R squared, and that gives us about 0.598. Now here's the important part. Um, it is important to look at your slope because if your slope is positive, then R will be positive. And if your slope is negative, then R will be negative. Now, whenever you square a negative, you always get a positive number. That's why if you're given your R squared, of course, it will always be a positive number. And in order to know if your R is negative, you have to look at the slope to determine. Um, so in this case, how do we interpret R? Uh, we can say an R value of 0.598, which is what we got when we got the square root, indicates there is a moderate positive relationship between height and volume of trees. So when we say height and volume of trees, we're talking in context. And when we're talking about R, we always want to talk about the strength and the direction. So the strength is moderate and the direction is positive. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about is how do we interpret R squared. R squared is given as a percentage and it is 35.8%. Now this is always uh, has to do with your variability in Y. So the way we would interpret R squared, we would say, about 35.8% in the variation in volume, because we don't want to just say the variation in y. We want to talk in context to the problem. And what is y in this case? y happens to be our volume right here. So 35.8% in the variation in volume can be explained or can be attributed by the least squares regression of y, which in this case is volume, on height, which is your x.